Working with a relational database is of course great because we get a nice, well-defined and enforced structure for our data. So there's not many surprises that way, as opposed to something like a document database where there's not much of a schema that gets enforced for the data. Now there are many legitimate use cases for document databases, of course, and there are legitimate cases for many applications that use relational databases where you might need to have a more loose structure on some of your data. And that might be something where you don't know the structure of the data that you need to put into a column ahead of time, and there might not be too much consistency about that data. So for example, if you're integrating with a third party and you get some data back from that third party that you need to store in your own database, it might be unknown what the total possible shape of that data might be. Instead of mapping the whole possible structure of that data to columns in your own database, it might make more sense just to store that as JSON data. So there are very legitimate use cases for storing unstructured data, even in a relational data database setting. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. We've got this really simple sample application that has this log model. We've got metadata and context as JSON fields on that log model. And we're going to see here how to work with data that would be in these fields and how to run queries against them. So the first question might be, what does JSON here, this type actually map to? We can take a look at that actually over here in the Prisma API reference. For Postgres, it's JSONB, SQL Server, it's not supported. MySQL, it's JSON. MongoDB, a bit of a different case because that's a document database, of course, but that deals with BSON in relaxed mode. SQLite, this is new at Prism 6.2. There's support for JSON in SQLite that maps to JSONB and same for CockroachDB as well. So why don't we get ourselves set up here with a new database, a new Postgres database, and we'll get some data into it to test with. Let's head over to console.prisma.io and we can click new project. For the project name, I'm just going to call mine JSON data. That's fine. We'll choose Prisma Postgres and then the default region and create project. Okay, so that's firing up. We're provisioning now, and then it's going to move into connected just there. All right, let's come down here and we'll grab our database URL, Pulse API key, copy that to the clipboard. We'll come back over to the project now and head over to the environment file, .env. That's where we can paste in those values and close up .env. We're all good there. Next, let's run migrations. All right, so let's do npx prisma migrate dev. For the name, we can just choose init. All right, the migrations are done. What we can do now is seed the database. So we've got this seed.ts file, just some functions here to create some fake logging data, some fake data in our database. And we can get that in place with npx prisma db seed. All right, so the command's executed. Everything has gone through there. We can check it out actually in the Prisma data platform. Let's head up over here to studio. And in here, Prisma Studio is going to show us our logging data that's been added. Okay, so let's go over to the application now and we're going to try to run some queries. So in server.ts, we've got this main function and we've got logs, which is doing Prisma log find many. Let's start with that. So npm run dev to see what we get. All right, so there should be all of our log data. So there should be those 20 records that we created from our seed file. Now, the very first way that we might query for some data that's in a JSON field is, let's say for some reason, we've got the entire JSON object. So for example, we could copy this object and just put it into our file up here just to play with. So const target metadata, let's do that. That's going to be this object. So if we knew this total shape of the object and everything like that, we could come into find many, pass where, like we typically do for most of our queries, where metadata equals our target metadata. If we save that, the query runs again. And what we've got now is just a single record because we've targeted specifically the log record that contains that exact metadata. Now, chances are our applications aren't going to know the total shape of what we're looking for like that. Instead, we might be looking for something like, hey, let's get all of the logs where the IP address equals a specific value. So why don't we start to look at how we can do queries like that? Because that is a more realistic case. All right, so we've got this IP here, 192.168.10. Let's copy that. Metadata contains that IP address at the top level. So what we're going to do is come up here and pass path. We can pass path and then IP, because that's what we want to look for, and where that equals what we copied to the clipboard. All right, so let's save this. 
Now what we get back is the same record, and that's because we have got this record with a specific IP address. The other records have different IP addresses, so we're able to hone in on the logging record where metadata.ip, to access that object, let's say, equals that exact value. And again, that's accessed here through this path array. Now the question will come up, what if we have some deeply nested structure within our JSON? And we can solve for that too. Let's take the example of params. So params is another level of nesting here with our JSON. Let's say we wanted to get this user ID. We wanted to search by user ID. So that's two levels of nesting, and we can solve for that too. Instead of using equals though, let's try something else. First, let's go into our path though. So we're no longer looking into IP. Instead, we want to look for params. Next to params, we want to look for user ID. So in this scenario, you can imagine we want to search through our logs. We have some screen where we're searching through our logs specifically by user ID. The query that we construct then on the back end might look something like this. The first path is params, the second is user ID, and then whatever goes here is what we're going to search by. And what we can do is instead of using equals, we can use a different operator, something like string contains, for example. String contains will allow us to do something like take this bit of the value for the user ID and pass that in. So let's try that. Let's paste this in now. We'll hit save. And what we get back is the record again, and that is because we are targeting params.userID and we're passing in string contains to get that value. There are a couple other operators. So string contains is one. We have string starts with or string ends with as well. So some other ways to search. And ultimately, if we know how our paths could be shaped in our JSON data, we can start to build them up in this path array like this. Okay, so as the last bit here, why don't we take a look at how to write some data when it comes to JSON fields. All right, so what we'll do is we'll get rid of all of this. We don't want to do a find many. Instead, we want to do a create. Let's call this new log. We want a new log to be a logged out. So create, let's give it some data. And that data is going to be the top level stuff for this log. So level info, that's fine like that. Let's do app ID. I've got one on my clipboard that's going to map up to what we need. So app ID is there. And we'll have message. This is a test log. All right, so let's just do this. Let's save this bit for now. And then we'll get the ID for it to start to play with with an update. All right, so we're going to save this. We've got our test log here. We've got this ID for the new record. I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard. And then let's do this, updated log. So updated log, just like that. Prisma log update now is what we want. And we want to update where the ID for that log is what's on my clipboard. Then for the data now, we don't wanna update any of these values. Instead, we're going to update metadata and context. So metadata, because it's a JSON field, it can take whatever shape we really need. We saw some patterns in the test data earlier, but just by way of example, metadata here can just be foo bar like this. Let's do updated log. We'll hit save on that. And so what we've got now is over here in metadata, we have foo bar. And then what we can do is if we know that our JSON data contains some array values, we can use instead of string contains to do some searching, we can use another operator called array contains. Okay, so I think we get the idea here. We can just put whatever we need to into this JSON field because it's not strictly defined what the shape of it needs to be. And just to round things out, we can do something similar for context. So context gets foobar as well. And there we go, foobar on both metadata and context. One thing to note here before wrapping up is that the way that we construct our queries to get at our JSON data kind of depends on the target database that we're using. So for example, in Postgres, we use the syntax where we pass path and then an array, but in other databases like SQLite, for example, we would pass a string value there instead. There is support in Prisma as well for some more advanced querying against JSON data, and you can get a sense of that in the documentation for working with JSON, which will be linked below. You can also check it out at prisma.io slash docs. If you've got any questions about working with JSON data in your Prisma projects, feel free to leave a comment below, or you can reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web or at prisma on x slash Twitter. Thanks for watching.